Interstate 70. Some people just see four lanes of asphalt, small towns, and farmland. But if you're in Northwest Kansas, look off to the north, where the land meets the sky, on roads a little less paved. It's here you'll see land carved thousands of years ago, and history that should never be forgotten. Battles won, lives lost, alliances forged, a place to explore, a place to listen to nature, with centuries of tales to tell. On this stretch of I-17, there's a story just beyond the horizon. Explore the towns of Northwest Kansas, where there's a story around every curve. This story begins in Cheyenne County and the town of St. Francis, just 40 minutes north of I-70. It's a small town full of good people. And just to the north, you'll discover a unique natural wonder of Kansas, the Orickery Breaks. The vast ravines and gullies were carved over 9,000 years ago by the tributaries of the Orickery and the Republican Rivers. The breaks are 36 miles long and extend into both Nebraska and Colorado. The people of St. Francis are proud of this natural wonder. Talk to them, and they'll probably tell you their own tales of the breaks, especially Tobe Zweigart. Born in 1916, Tobe has lived all his life in Cheyenne County. He's hunted and trapped these grounds for decades. Tobe is a farmer, welder, and sculptor who used his talents to help mark many spots along the breaks. He still takes people out on tours and tells fascinating stories about many different places, like Horse Thief Cave, a small area once well hidden in the breaks. The cave was used by thieves who would steal horses in the area and would hide away unseen. Well, th this area where we're at now, this was the back part of it where they stored their horses. And when the county built the road, they come down through here and they didn't realize what it was going on till they drove over the top of it and the front end of it broke down. And, but uh, this was the back part of it where they stored their horses and their kitchen and living room was in the front side. Then there's Devil's Gap, a breathtaking group of canyons. Indians who were camped at nearby Cherry Creek passed through these canyons on their way to raid Old Julesburg, a settlement in Colorado on New Year's Day, 1865. The scenery made such an impression that tales of Devil's Gap were passed down from generation to generation. Chief Strange Owl, he came from Montana. He was the oldest one and he wanted to see the Devil's Gap up there. So we, we finally took him up and he sat in the back end of the van and we just talked on the way up and pretty soon he said, stop, this is it. And he's never been here before in his life. And he got out and he walked about, oh, I would say around 200 yards and he got up there and he said, this is exactly the way it was explained to me. And he's never been here before, but he knew exactly where it was at. The Great Western Cattle Trail also came through the breaks. This famous trail started at the southern tip of Texas and made its way up to Nebraska and beyond. Back in the 1880s, Cowboys would drive thousands of cattle at a time up through here. When, when they got to the Hackberry Creek, they went to the Northwest to bring their cattle here. And they usually had several thousand head of cattle. And this is the north end of it here. And the south end of it is about a mile south. And that's where their cattle, because the, the, cattle, or the canyon was four or five feet deeper than it is now. At the upper west corner of Cheyenne County, visit the three corners. Out in the middle of hilly cattle pastures lie the borders to Kansas, Colorado, and Nebraska, marked with a surveyor stone. With one step, 
you can be in three states at once. Surveyors first marked these borders in 1862. In 1990, surveyors came back using intricate maps and GPS to resurvey the borders. Well, it turns out the original surveyors were only eight inches off the correct boundaries. But the Arikari breaks are not the only thing you can find in Cheyenne County. Just off of US 27 is the Cherry Creek Encampment Monument. Nearby, 194 Cheyenne survivors of the brutal Sand Creek Massacre in Colorado came and joined forces with several other tribes. Well, see, that's when Shavington came down there to uh, get rid of the Indians. And they was peaceful Indians. They didn't want to fight at all. See, and he moved in because he was going to kill the Indians and then he was going to uh, have an office in Coretta, a terrible thing. Yeah, these are all things that was told to me. It's written that more than 3,000 Indians camped at Cherry Creek. On New Year's Day, 1865, over 1,000 of them traveled through Devil's Gap on their way to Old Julesburg to seek revenge and plunder whatever food and supplies they could find. The tribes who camped at Cherry Creek forged alliances that were felt throughout American history. When the different Indians come together and then they decided uh, to, to go north and kind of, instead of fighting each other, let's get together and all of us fight the white man together. And that's what happened. The Great Plains War began which ended years later with the slaughter of General George Custer and his men at Little Bighorn. In 1990, Tobe created a memorial for the survivors of the Sand Creek Massacre. The encampment site features the names of the survivors, just a few hundred yards away from where the actual Indian encampment was. The Indian site that I got out here, that's the only one that, that ever been built by a white man. Yeah, and you know what? The Indians, they give me a blanket to be buried in for what I'd done for them. 